What's up guys, Logicon here back again with another video. This is gonna be podcast number two on the channel. So if you are enjoying this content, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date for all the awesome new content I have planned and coming up in the next few weeks. Um, I'm sort of trying to pick out a direction for this podcast to go, and I really like the idea of today's video. Um, but if you have anything else that you think might be a cool idea for a podcast series, drop that down in the comment section. Let me know. Let me know what you're thinking, and uh, that'd be awesome, guys. But anyway, on to the topic of today's video. A lot of you guys know that I have a 1996 Corvette myself, and I really love that vehicle. I treat it like my baby. It's just about my favorite vehicle on the entire planet but not just because it's cool it's because of the heritage behind Corvette and I think the heritage behind any car that has a following behind it is super important in looking at where it came from and where it is now today and so that inspired the idea for today's video I wanted to research a car company I had never even heard of before and see you know if they're not around anymore what happened with them and where are they uh, so that's what brings us today. We are looking at the Frontenac Motor Company, uh, and our story is going to start back in 1878 um, in La Choc des Fonds, which is in northwestern uh, Switzerland, really close to France, which is why it has that sort of French accent name going on there. Um, and our story starts with a boy named Louis. Uh, he's born on Christmas Day. He is a speed-loving baby, due for greatness, and he wants to win. Um, very quickly on, he realized that he wanted to work on automobiles, and so at the age of 16, he began uh, racing and engineering his own bikes to race. Uh, but it didn't take very long before he realized that that was not the best way to go, and he switched over to car racing, and actually very quickly he got a sponsorship from a small company you may have heard of before, known as uh, Fiat. And Fiat actually picked him up, and good thing they did, because in his first race as a rookie, he actually took uh, pole position one, which is impressive for any rookie to do in any race series, uh, which really set the standards very high for his racing career and for his two little brothers who also had a deep passion for racing. Um, so very quickly on though, while he was still with Fiat, they sent him over to America and he's working over there and he actually uses some of the money that he gets from Fiat to bring over his two younger brothers. And their names are Arthur and Gaston. Arthur is old enough to race and really loves the cars, but Gaston is still too young. I mean, He's racing at 16, but his little brother is apparently too young, so I don't know what you would qualify as too young at that point. Um, but he does also love the auto racing industry, and so he brings them both over. They're all over there, and very quickly on, he actually switches from Fiat to Buick, another name brand that we all should know. Um, and while he's at Buick, he actually meets William C. Durant. And uh, many of you guys probably know this, but Durant actually founded General Motors back in the early 1900s. Now, at this time, he actually was working at Buick. He was actually not at GM at the exact time that he met uh, Luis. And for this is a good reason, but the reason that Durant wasn't actually at GM is because they had some business discrepancies and the executives over there weren't exactly happy with the way he was doing things. So because of this, Durant was actually looking to start his own new car company again from the ground up. So he partnered with Luis and actually took the nameplate from his last name and turned it into an everlasting brand that we still have to this day. And many of you guys probably have some of these cars in your driveway. I had no idea this was where the brand started at, but Luis's last name was Chevrolet, and that is actually where Chevrolet came from. William C. Durant and Louis Chevrolet actually partnered up and had a co-joint company where they um, were making vehicles. And it didn't take long though before Luis was kind of unhappy with the process that Chevrolet was doing things. I mean, he was making a lot of money manufacturing these cars and selling them, but it wasn't his lifestyle. He really loved to go fast and just kick ass. And so he went back and started his own company in 1915 with his two brothers, uh, and they named that Frontenac Car Company, uh, Motor Company, which is where all of the story actually starts for them. Now, they really loved racing, like I said, so it didn't take them very long. In 1916, Arthur and Luis both raced in the Indy 500, which is an impressive feat. To think about it, in your first rear year, 
as a company, you're already racing in the Indy 500. You've got to have some really good racers and some really good um, capabilities to put the work in to actually even just get there. Um, and I know that was early on, but even then, 500 laps on an oval track is an impressive feat no matter who you are. So very quickly after that, though, World War I actually broke out. And so they went from, like I said, kicking ass on the track to kicking ass on horseback. And they went over there. We, you know, we uh, kicked some butt. We won the war, came back home and actually got back on the track, started racing again. Now, at this point, Gaston was actually old enough to be racing. So he wasn't actually racing for the Frontenac Motor Company at this point. His two older brothers were both still racing for them. But in 1921... Uh, Gaston was racing for a co-joint partnership uh, that they had with another Indy 500 team. Um, and he actually won the Indy 500 in 1921, which is an Im impressive accomplishment uh, for Gaston, who was the youngest and the only one to ever win the Indy 500 in that family. Um, this is where the story takes a sad turn, though, and sort of comes to an end. In 1929, let me get this right, 1929... Uh, the two oldest brothers actually crashed and lost their fortune in the racing series and Gaston uh, actually while he was racing he died a few years earlier in a Beverly Hills car crash so they've all crashed Gaston died unfortunately um, and there was no saving him at that point um, so the two older brothers they stopped racing because of the injuries and they lost their fortune with Frontenac Car Company um, so the oldest brother Luis actually went back to Chevrolet his own nameplate company and started working on the assembly line until he died in 1941 now the middle brother Arthur he actually has the saddest story I think um, he worked for a boat producing company in World War II and he actually committed suicide in 1946 um, now this is a sad ending to the story but I think that is such an inspirational story to see where these brothers actually came from their roots coming over from switzerland making it in america and starting two of their own companies i mean we've got chevrolet and frontenac car company which were both very successful at the time and chevrolet to this day is still doing amazing um so that's sort of where the story takes us today guys if you did enjoy this content make sure you just hit that like and subscribe button and also drop a comment if you want to see something else in a future video it was a lot of fun for me to research frontenac i had never even heard of them before today uh, so if you guys did enjoy like i said just hit that like button and let me know and as always guys just hit that subscribe button and i will catch you later peace out bye, -bye.